Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Lisa with IVF Manifesting a Miracle. And today for my soul sister conversation, I invited a friend on. Her name is Lynn Newman. Welcome, Lynn. Hi, thanks for having me. Yes, Lynn is based in British Columbia, Canada, and um, she is a fellow occupational therapist, a mama of two. She's married to a cancer warrior and um, also a family life coach. She's also the founder of Gray Mothering, and I'm so honored to talk with you, Lynn. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it's, a, it's amazing that we are connected <laughs> from Canada to Colorado. Yeah. Seriously, right? And you just moved from Toronto. Mm -hmm and exploring a whole new world um, in the wilderness, surrounded by trees and beauty in Canada. Like, it's tempting. I, I, my husband and I joke about, hmm, maybe we might like to look at moving to Canada with, with what's going on here in the United States. But anyway, well, that's a, a, lot, a lot of Americans here. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, um, this month, October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And I, I'm grateful to have this talk with you because I know you personally have experienced some losses um, and they're very personal. And um, I appreciate you just being open to kind of sharing your story through fertility, through loss, through kind of the darkness and the light. And I'd love for you to um, share kind of, um, we can start with, you know, well, gray mothering. Can you tell me a little bit about gray mothering and how your fertility journey led to you to form what you are creating now, what you're doing. <laughs> mm. Do we have all day? I mean, I, can I know. Well, the simple story of it was after having gone through fertility issues, and we can get into it, yeah. and losses. Yeah. Um, I was pregnant, and then my husband was diagnosed with cancer, and he was given 10% chance to live. And so I was like, fuck, you know, like, mm -hmm. I'm pregnant this is like happy we're good and then boom so you know fertility cancer and it lasted for 10 years so he's now cancer free but it was like touch and go like living in the unknown for several years as it grew and the tumor in his pancreas grew and mm -hmm. then I had a second daughter and when the girls were about maybe one and three or two and four I took a train to Montreal by myself and it was like a weekend sort of retreat and I was journaling and it was just that that came to me. It was like gray mothering because it's not this way or that way. You know, there's so many different ways in which, and it's when it's not obvious when we parent, become mothers or, or we're mothering ourselves and we're having to navigate a life that we didn't imagine or, you know, we all do, but it, it was very personal for me. Like I took it, I'm sensitive at heart and um, yeah, I went through a lot of shame and doubt and putting, being really hard on myself. I felt really responsible. Like I'm a positive person, you know, you have a lot of messaging out there. Like we can sort of take charge and, and, but we don't have all the control either, you know? Right. So it's like, how do we navigate and reconcile those things and, and honor both the light and the dark? And so for gray, for me is, yeah, when it's stormy, when it's foggy, but also where the possibility lies in terms of growth. Um, yeah. No, that's so beautiful. I mean, just, I love your message of, you know, helping others, you're finding hope, that inspiration, what's possible. And I feel the exact same way. I mean, I love that you're joining us in this talk with me because you too have had a fertility journey and you can appreciate, you know, how long it takes many people on their path to motherhood and, you have such a unique, unique story. I would love for you to kind of share maybe your history with behind PCOS and yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And <laughs> whether you, someone goes through fertility struggles or not, like, or even if you have a loss, like there's just so many stories like that are attached to, to struggle and to loss. Mm -hmm. I think maybe for most people, you know, where it's, Right. It's not black and white. It is so gray. Like we all experience loss. We all experience. It's not something you can avoid. Right? Yeah. And even just, just, I was just speaking to my husband's cousin who just had um, terminated her pregnancy due to genetic uh, chromosomal. Yeah. The baby wasn't healthy. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just that loss, right. She's like, I'd rather go through 
so much physical pain that the emotional pain that I'm in right now is just, she, she's like, I, I never knew, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then the story that she was telling her, like, you know, deep down at her core, was like, I killed my baby, you know? Like, and, and then also on the flip side, diminishing her loss, like d- diminishing her grief, you know, like feeling bad that she was grieving mm-hmm. and also being aware that she didn't want to like be the Debbie Downer, you know? But, yeah. So I, yeah, there's a lot there, right? Like, there's believers, just, yeah. like honoring that pain, right? Yeah. Like honoring the darkness. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing, but I think oftentimes in society and even just internally and, you know, whether we've inherited those beliefs from just gener- from our genera- previous generations, right? Yeah. We're having yeah. to work through a lot of those patterns where mm-hmm. we judge yeah, we don't have the skills. And so I'm huge, like personally, I've done the work and then I, you know, love helping others yeah. to have those skills to, to honor sort of what is, because a lot of the times it's what gets us in trouble is, you know, judging what we're going through. So for, for right. capability, it was like, I felt like I had, like, what was wrong with me if I couldn't, you know, I was doing all the things and it felt really, Uncom- like I felt a lot of shame on some level or just mm-hmm. grief too for not like for it taking so long so I didn't have cycle like a period mm-hmm. um, so PCOS but I you know even before I wanted to become a mother as a teenager I was like I'm not getting a period some that's not healthy you know yeah we're not taught like often at a young age like how important it is to know our bodies and just like we we need the regular cycles and yeah for and years, I was they just told, like that was what did they just tell you that's normal like no, they just didn't, the doc, well, the one doctor did like laparoscopy mm-hmm. and didn't really do anything else in university. I had a woman doctor just say like, no one really, they're like, just wait until you want to have kids and then you can deal with it then. Not awful. I tried, yeah. I tried, yeah. Oh my gosh. So so he- as soon as I got married, I'm like, okay, I'm going to talk to, talk to a doctor. And he said, yeah, like you might as well spend the money on a Lamborghini instead of go through you know, oh. the process of trying to conceive and become a mom. And I thought, wow. Oh, you know, oh my gosh. People say, oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, so then from there, you really took charge of your health, right? Yeah, I did. I did. So um, yeah, t- took a totally like integrative sort of holistic approach, um, you know, a whole bunch of things. You yeah. never went through fertility treatments. I, I went not, no, like I did take a, a medication, a, what was it, Clomid to help with ovulation. Mm-hmm. Um, and was that, I think with my first, I was taking that. With my second, I didn't. Yeah. And but then- I, so I, I did that to help me. I wasn't against any of that, but I also wanted to like, um, I knew that there was something not right with my body. And so to, in order to, optimize the environment because I also had two losses so I had to do very much with so PCOS is very much lifestyle Mm -hmm. it's an endocrine and metabolic disorder but um, there's a lot that you can do with lifestyle so you know I really like slowed down as much as I could it was a part-time job and not everyone has that ability to do that but it was a choice I guess that I was able to to make um and even then I'm like, uh, oh, you know, like not everyone has that, so that, but I had that vision. I, you know, went through processed a lot of like envy and, you know, went and did hypnosis. I, um, you know, food looked at food. I had started taking out dairy, like as a 10 years before, um, yeah, did a whole bunch of things, castor oil packs, chew gum twice a day, and, but not in the sense of, and also surrendering, you know, like, I think at some point on our journey, we do these things in order to control the outcome. And then at some point I had to shift for me. It's like, once you let go of being let go of that outcome, which isn't easy, you know, it's like same when Mark had cancer. It's, I just held that vision of him being in the 10% Mm -hmm. while also doing the work internally to be okay with no matter what happened that I getting to the place that I would be okay. If I became a widow, of course I would be shattered and I don't want that. But in order to, to be centered, I had to get to that place because I had two little ones. And yeah, I want to kind of rewind just for a minute. Like when you were doing all of your holistic supports, were you, had you already experienced your miscarriages? 
Uh, you so on your, or on your path to motherhood? I was on my path. Like I had done some things. I can't remember exactly, but like certainly after the two losses, like I went even more deep into like the surrender process, yeah. right? You did the uh, inner work, which it takes. And yeah. And started getting your period back. Is that kind of when that all happened? I can't even remember. I was not until after I had the kids that I was getting regular cycles. Um, so I was taking my temperature and doing all those things. Oh, okay. um, so we were doing like monitoring, cycle monitoring and all of that before I had the miscarriages and after as well. I was doing weekly uh, acupuncture with a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner. Yeah. And I continued with her yeah, like it cost a lot of money. Like I had a little bit of trauma after that too, especially, and then with cancer and I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? Like you know? share, share with us about when Mark got diagnosed, you were, you had a little one. No, I was three months pregnant. Three months. Oh my gosh. Like, like third pregnancy, first baby. Yeah. You're three months, three months pregnant. So mm -hmm. tell us that story. Cause that's so moving. And Mark gets diagnosed. Yeah. So, but just before that, I had a call with, um, so it's before my losses or maybe I, or I, I have a seeing a hypnotherapist and she's, uh -huh. she was, she gave me a name, a recommendation of a book called spirit babies by Walter McKitchen. And, and um, which is like how to communicate with your unborn child. And it's the premise of, yeah, that our babies kind of choose us or that babies have spirits and yeah. souls which I completely yeah. and fully subscribe to that belief. Um, and so I had booked, you know, it was, a, it was $300. This is over 10 years ago. Um, he has since passed and with the author with the author of that book, book. Yeah. Yeah. and he awesome. had a wait list. So by the time I spoke to him, I was maybe 10 weeks pregnant okay. and this was a long distance call. And, um, so he had talked about the connection that I had with this, this, the spirit baby that I lost. So the two losses. And he said like, those were like true deaths to you. And it just felt nice because my miscarriages were early on. Mm -hmm. And I, and I carry some sh not shame, but it's like, it's not something I publicly share because I don't want people, again, I, I don't want to diminish my own, you know, because a loss at 15 weeks is harder maybe than a loss at six weeks, you know? Like but that's my own my own thing. Like I don't loss is loss, but that's why yeah. I had to go through like you know that process yeah. of just like loss is loss. Yeah. And there's perspective around that too, you know, like mm -hmm. yeah, people mm -hmm. who lose children. Of course, the attachment is different. Like I was attached to the vision of becoming yeah, a it's mother. your personal story and your your story through loss and yeah. 15. Yeah. So when you had this call with him, he, he recognized right away, you had two losses and they were real deaths to you. And, yeah. and yeah. then what did he foresee for you? What did he, what was like, yeah, so he said, the baby's back, the, that spirit is with you. And then described the connection, the karmic pattern that we had. And it was one of lot like love and loss, like in previous lives, we had lost each other. Um, and so the baby was concerned, but this perspective, I didn't care if it was true or not. I totally believe it, it is. Um, I believe in past lives and all of that, but it helped me with that. There's also, it's not just all on me. It took the pressure off, like that there's this other spirit and this other baby and there's something much bigger at play. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. So yes. So I had, it was like this reconciling of, I okay. <laughs> do all of this so it doesn't minimize because there's also something with like okay so I ended up with two babies and Mark ended up cancer free you know against all the odds yeah but it's, it's that's tricky too because it's it, that doesn't always happen right you know what I mean like if right. so yes you can take charge and you can't control the outcome like it's you're working you're co-creating with the universe too and there might be something bigger there is something bigger at play. Do you know what I mean? Oh yeah. So Walter had said the baby is wavering. Um, when you were pregnant, when I was pregnant on this call and I was like, Oh no, like, no, I don't want to have another loss. And he had uh, said I could chant and visualize and do these things to just help build that connection with the spirit and just let the baby know that, you know, things are going to be okay. Um, but at the very end, he said, there's another baby here and her connection is with Mark, your husband. And they were brother and sister in a past life. And, 
you know, if she comes and getting goosebumps, like she'll have him wrapped around her finger. Like, and it, they just had a beautiful bond, you know? Wow. And in my pregnancy, a couple of weeks later, I can't remember timelines, but um, I did feel a shift like energetically in my, and I was so tuned in, you know, like Mark and yeah. I saw all the green speckles of light the month we conceived, like we were just so hyper conscious and aware. Yeah. Um, I felt that shift and Stella truly is like she, the bond that her and Mark have are huge. So he was diagnosed with cancer just a few weeks later. And I think, yeah, it was all sort of uh, worked out timing wise really well, I guess. Like if you were to, yeah. you know, um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, well, can you share a little bit about that? So you're three months pregnant, he gets diagnosed, then your second one comes along. Tell me again how that went, went down. Cause you he were- was diagnosed. So uh, Stella came five or six days late her, after from her due date and he was undergoing treatment was radiation like there was nothing for melanoma um mm-hmm. it was like surgery radiation and the mantra that we had was like keep them alive long enough until they come out with something and then let's throw everything like cashed out stocks like fundraised over a hundred hundred thousand dollars luckily wow. to pay for alternative stuff the alternative stuff like all the things that we did yeah. do anything no, I'm like advancing. Of, so once I had my second baby, then it spread to his pancreas. And then, then it was like, fuck, what, what do you, yeah. so they give me two years to live. And so we're like, let's, yeah, do everything first we can. Years of life, right? Your girls, like their first, oh, yeah. I mean, you're a new mom with two little girls. Oh, it was hard. It was I hard. can't even imagine. Like, yeah. Yeah. Right? It's like how people are feeling with the pandemic. Like there's a lot of unknown. Yeah. Um, your health and your sense of safety and security is at risk. Like, or, you know, I mean, it's different than the pan, like these are different things, but there's a lot of um, similar threads that I'm noticing. Yeah. I mean, if you had COVID and you had a 90% chance of dying, like the chance, the risk of death is a lot lower, you know, like, it, mm-hmm. or the, but uh, it's still, yeah, it's not pleasant. Um, and it still attacks that sense of safety, you know, and also that, there's only so much you can do, you know, you know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I also you... describe, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, go, go for it. <laughs> I remember describing, so there was three years. So Gwen was six months old when his it metastasized to his pancreas and then it grew like that tumor. Um, so stage four melanoma, which is serious. Yeah. And uh, so for three years. So I remember being like, what the, f-? like, I just either want him to die or I want him to get better because this is not, this is the gray. Like, it's so uncomfortable. And I lived it for so long. Wow. Sometimes it'd just be easier. You know, you, it's like being in, with fertility. Like, and I remember saying, this is the equivalent of, and I remember calculate like, 36 months divided by, mm-hmm. you know, three months is 12, but it felt like 30, like, it felt like 20 miscarriages in a row. Because every, uh, every three months he had scans and then they would tell us the bad news, you know? Wow. And then, uh, yeah, anyway. You've been through a lot. Where, where do you think you get your strength? I mean, have you always had this inner strength, this like you and I both are all about trusting, right? Trusting, mm-hmm. not trying to control things, just surrendering, right? But feeling empowered and you have this like inner guidance do you think being an OT has helped you to through that like where do you think I don't know what can you share a little bit about yeah um I think being an OT is part of who I am of course I, I think it's maybe what attracted me to becoming an OT but who I am you know it's OT didn't weird. make me who I am like yeah. that's part of who I am um yeah I think I probably come from a I actually my family like I think a lot of this how my life has evolved yeah. I worked through a lot of traumatic grief that I inherited from my parents mm-hmm. and my dad. They had a lot of traumatic loss um, growing up. Yeah. Like my dad's sister and then my mom's brother, her mom, her dad, her two nephews, like a bunch of people um, wow. when they were in their formative years mm-hmm. and it was never processed. And I think that the, these experiences, so I think perspective for me, the bigger picture and that spiritual symbol symbolism or that thread yeah. is what helped me and also yeah like that having that perspective that it's like it's personal but it's also bigger mm-hmm. um really helped me navigate 
that. And like the OT part, I guess, which helped mm -hmm. me is just knowing to like how to advocate for myself, uh, how to like get the resources, mm -hmm. um, really listening to my intuition and to my, you know, saying no, simplifying, like there's so much. Um, yeah, just my environment, you know, being just decluttering, like for me, simplifying became a huge necessity. Like I, it was out of necessity that I needed to simplify and make sure that my environment was calm or like de I would declutter. Like for me, like some people cooking is very th therapeutic, but decluttering and simplifying is very therapeutic for me. So I do yeah. that now. Mm -hmm. what has that given you helped you really like, feel like a lightness inside where you can focus on the things that really matter like uh from a sensory like nervous is like just having like being in a soothing space yeah. rather than like tons of clutter I uh, was just more soothing to my nervous system it also felt empowering that I could tangibly like yeah. affect change in my environment um yeah I think those listening to this will maybe take a piece of this, hopefully, and implement it a little too, and recognize the power of your environment. You know, us with our background as occupational therapists, you know, we kind of take that for granted. Like we just understand the impact of environment and things like that. And how the more you can simplify your life and empowering, giving yourself choices, right? You choose how you want to create your space, mm -hmm. how you want to feel. And on this fertility path, you know, you really want to feel good, as good as you can. Um, yeah, yeah like to have your inner world reflect your outer world. So sometimes it can be chaotic and messy. Um, yeah. So it's like, how do you be in the chaos? Right. Um, right. And accept also. I think I also, the perspective of that, this was preparing me for something else. So like also preparing me for motherhood. Right. So work through the beliefs and the blocks around exactly. what was getting in the way and then really believed without a shadow of a doubt that I would become a mom so and I say that with at the same time like I know that doesn't happen for everybody either you know um but it was like not like a me like hanging on like this is gonna happen I'm gonna make right. it happen it was just like I've done all that I can and I'm and I'm just gonna keep yeah I don't I there's yeah. so much so beautiful. Like what other ways did it, did you help move through the dark? Yeah. I know you were traveling, right? You were traveling. you shared with me. Um, like for fertility or for with the, just in general or and in general, like through these dark times, like I know people who are, we're all living through COVID, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And it's a really dark time for many and kind of people facing shadows. And I know you have a lot of different certifications and trainings, mm -hmm. Um, and I'd love for you to share those if you'd like to, but like what other, what helped you like in moving through the dark? I think finding spaces that I could just, that I knew people wouldn't judge me for actually going there and being like, I'm fucking struggling right now and being okay with that. And then also being okay with being around because being in the light, like actually there was, that was edgy also for me. Cause I didn't, I wasn't freaking out. I wasn't, I mean, there were times but I was also actually that time in our lives, like I, we like saw it as an opportunity. So like when Mark was diagnosed and we had the little ones, so it wasn't yeah. fertility, but even with fertility, I remember thinking like the quote that helped me the most was seeing it as baby was preparing me for something like that. It was an advanced soul preparing us as parents. Like, so that perspective helped me. Yeah. Um, take the pressure off and also settle into what was going on, like in the present, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that. So, How, you know, yeah. Everything's leading you to, you're reassured that it's, it's all going to work out, that it's all going to be okay. Like you're being prepared, you, you know, what is it, the quote? Like God get, doesn't give you more than you can handle or I don't know if he does like you know like sometimes people get mad at that too it's like well some people and I, I remember struggling with that too like I would take it personal or I had shame like why is all this stuff happening because there's more things like I was wrongfully dis dismissed after maternity leave I had a cousin at 35 who died like at, right at the same time Mark, wow. there's all you know like everyone goes through stuff but right. 
I remember speaking to a mom who's her son. So the other, the only other people that I really connected with, like, I didn't feel like I connected with moms, uh, like, and I didn't feel like I connected with people with cancer. Like it was just because I was kind of going through both and I was a caregiver, um, but then a mom, like, yeah, and depression and, but uh, it was moms with kids with cancer that I really felt like I, they got it because they were caregivers, but they were also moms to young ones mm-hmm. and um, who were sick. And mm-hmm. there was one mom, her daughter had had cancer. And uh, she said, like, you know, some people get thrown boulders, you know, other, some people have pebbles along their path and other people have, have big boulders and we're boulder people, you know, mm-hmm. and, and everyone gets a boulder or two at some point in their lives, right? Maybe it's not until like the very end, you know, long after a long, nice life. Um, and other people, it's like, when they're born, you know, as micro preemies at 24 weeks. And yeah, yeah the, the biggest thing for me was to, to like take responsibility, but also not to over personalize it, that it was like something I did or didn't do. Right. Right. Um, because we all go through stuff at some point or another, you know, it's just kind of part of life. Yeah. And I love how when you and I have talked and we're connected to different groups and things and how the gray is really where the growth happens. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the rich part of life. Cause if everything, like I, I believe this, you know, if everything's just so easy, smooth sailing, are you really growing? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's exactly it. It's like, we don't want to, it's like amputating. If we take away the dark, right. Yeah. Um, and that's where like the egg is, that's where there's conception and ideas and babies are conceived and in the dark. No, I'm kidding. Dark. Yeah. In the womb. Yeah. You know, right. the dark is right. bad. It's yeah. just a relationship to it. You know, and of course there's grief and loss, but when I, the, the shadow is the judgment, right? Yeah. We often judge the sadness or the anger, the actual, just the emotion. But what we want to do is try and remove that judgment of it to help move to, to go through it. Yeah. Do you have any words you would give to women who are kind of in that place of kind of judging themselves, feeling like, gosh, did I bring this on myself? Like, you know, really, I, I just, I see different women who really take so much on to themselves and I encourage others to, to not wallow in that self. It's like that self-infliction, that pain, you know, but what, what would you say? Um, I would say, be curious, like, look at it, like find mm -hmm. a space where you can explore it Mm -hmm. um, and shine a light on it. Right. Yeah. Not avoid it. Right. Not avoid it. Like, again, we, and, and as the, yeah, like, there's a difference between looking at it with the loving eyes or, or just being like, Hmm, I wonder what this is about. You're almost like stepping out of it. And also we just need to feel it too. But I would say that this, it's just part of you. It's not all of you. Right. So like, yeah. And you're not defined. Are there practices that helped you practices that you did? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot, but like uh, tapping was really good when I did. And I do it with clients and I do it with, my kids and I do it. Tapping, with, yeah. Tapping, yeah. So like you can EFT tapping, right? So like even though I'm going through this and I feel like it's my fault, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. And then you go through like a yeah. Points. Yeah. I'm gonna actually do a, a talk with a friend of mine who does tapping. So yeah. yeah. So yeah. much that people can learn about to to for self-healing and yeah. yeah. Um Tapping with good. You're a writer, right? Do you like to write? <laughs> I would journal. Um, I mean, there's there's lots of yeah. things. And yeah. being in nature, I know you're a big one to be outside. I was just say, yeah, nature <laughs> movement. But you know what? There was times when I didn't have the energy to do any of that. And that's okay. So I think permission granting is really big too. And it depends who you are. Like I just really don't like people telling me what to do. So I would resist any of that. Um or I would end up feeling bad if I didn't, because I was like very productive, highly optimistic person, right? But then when I got knocked off and like things were falling apart and it's hanging by a piece of thread, like, again, this is accumulation of things. Right. Um, 
yeah, I just had to accept and honor where I was and not judge it, which is easier said than done too, you know, but the more that I I've learned, I've, you know, it's been over a decade and, and I have learned and it's so much better now than I can just, you know, just be with, and then I can move through it. I can wallow and I can lay in bed for, you know, a day, five hours, few hours, and then, and then things shift because I trust that process. Also replacing should with could, you know, Brené Brown talks about that. Like I should be getting up and cleaning the house, whatever someone says, you know, I should be eating my greens or yeah, you could, you could. What do I choose? You know, I've helped clients with that thinking too. It's almost like I get to, I get to take a shower instead of I should, or like I looking at it, like more from a, a, like the possibility of like, Instead of saying I have to do all my shots and I have to go to all my ultrasounds and my appointments, but like I get to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reframing, reframing the way we're thinking. Reframing is big. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it's like there's grief, a lot of grief associated in sometimes in those things too, right? Like, so we're, you just want to be witnessed and seen. Like, yeah, that sucks. Totally. You know, just depends where people, where you are, you know, like I remember there's times where I just need people to be with me, like be like, yeah, that does suck. Instead of like, look on the bright side or at least, you know, at least you can get pregnant or at least fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. You and I both like like, having those safe spaces to share. Yeah. The importance of community, right. The importance of having that sisterhood and having people to really hear you validate your feelings to just be a safe space. Right. That's so powerful. Yeah. I know you provide that for a lot of women with what you've created in gray mothering and mm-hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Cause I, I, I mean, I truly believe people know you have the answers within, right? Like, and then you, then you create your team or whatever it is that you need around you. Um, and that was another big thing for me to learn was um, like what true strength is, you know, like it's not doing it all on your own. It's not holding it all in. It's really um, yeah. You're speaking my language, totally. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Well, I just admire so much of like who you are and what you've gone through and just such a strong person. I admire you in so many different ways and Mm -hmm. honoring the light, the dark. I mean, it's life, right? It's honoring, honoring it all. Like, yeah. And it's a process. It's messy. It's not, this isn't saying that it's easy, right? Like, but when, but it's worth it too. Like if you can really go there, it's very uncomfortable. It's counterintuitive, right? Like, especially when we talk about, there's often, yeah. Like where it's just like about the light or about the good or be positive or good vibe, you know? Yes. We don't want to, but part of us getting, and I don't even like the word stuck because it's like, that's where you are. I don't, stuck almost has judgment to it. I don't, I haven't figured out what else, I don't know. In the muck, <laughs> in the when you're in the muck, you know, like yeah, yeah, when you're in the trenches, you know, yeah. that's where you are, and eventually you will get up to the view, the mountain top, top, you know, but um, yeah, sometimes you just need to look down, see where we are, and then look up, and and I think reflecting back too, I'm sure you can appreciate how all of those struggles you've experienced have made you a better mom, a better wife. Mm-hmm. So many. Yeah, I also didn't want to necessarily like go through all that, but yes, right, <laughs> right. right. Seeing the right. gifts, seeing the gifts that it's given. Oh, yeah, and they they deepen, um, they deepen, and they, but not you know. I also want to preface too, like not everyone does, um, get through that. You know, it takes a lot of grit too and support, and um, I just want to acknowledge too, like my privilege as well. Like you know that I had the resources and support, or I created that as well, because, um, yeah, it's not always the case either. Is there anything you would have liked? I mean, did you seek out your own help for the most part or did, did you seek out, you were pretty active, like active and owning your journey and yeah. Wanting healing. You didn't let, you weren't like waiting for people to come to you. No, and I'm pretty strong in my intuition and like faith and trust and stuff. So, um, and I was, yeah, pretty, yeah, like trying not to give my power away to others. If I see some clinicians that felt, it felt too clinical, then I was like, nope, not the right fit. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I hope yep. this talk gives people just that, that inspiration to live in possibility, really to trust their inner knowing, to honor the dark, to honor the light, that it's all a journey, that it's all helping us get to the next level, the next step. It's all there to teach us, help us grow, right? Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, and I, and I just want to acknowledge, yes, like there's so much growth, right? Like I've learned so much and it's made me, it's changed the way that I work, right? Mm -hmm. As and who I am as a mother and who I, how I show up. Um, like the work so, we're doing now too, right? Like great. Yeah. Mother. Didn't that come from all of that kind of pain oh, that you went through? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And it's, and I also don't want to discredit like the trauma that I've, you know, that I've experienced and worked through as well. And that took a lot of blood, sweat and tears. Um, mm -hmm. I just don't, so it's, it's, it, you, it requires lots of perseverance too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't want to put on the image too, that it was like easy and oh, no. you know, like this was tough. Um, it's also really empowering too, because the, 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 the motivation for me was if I don't, because I grew up with a mother who is beautiful, wonderful, but I didn't have, it's like borderline emotional neglect because, mm. and I don't blame her, but she was just so stunted, both my parents with their emotional life. Like she mm. was so blocked off because that's the only thing that she could do to survive. Wow. Right? She suffered so much loss that she couldn't mother the way that you know, I wanted to mother differently. And I knew like, I have to put myself first. Yeah. I have to, and I really wanted to become like most, you know, I wanted to become a mother. And once I did, I was really grateful. Um, and then I knew that like, if I go down or, you know, if I end up being stunted or like cut off from my emotions, this isn't going to be how I want to be, you know, and I want to model to them what that means to like. That's so amazing. Yeah. I think recognizing like, they people can only give what they're capable of kind of right yeah the compassion. She was, like capable of of giving what she could and so you recognizing that and honoring that's what she could do mm -hmm. but recognizing like I'm going to be a completely different kind of mom or I mean you're an amazing but, mom, by the way too, like you know I wasn't though all the time you know I wasn't like I had so much grief around that too. And I beat myself up, up about not being the mom I wanted to be. I, there was times where it wasn't pretty. Okay. Um, you know, I was struggled and, you know, I lost it. And I, oh, like there's, there's stories I could share. And like, yeah. and, I, I, and it's just the reality of when you're at your limit. Um, and I, it wasn't from a lack of trying, right? So I can only imagine like, you know, I'm, very resourced and intelligent you know not not that but you know what I mean like yeah, and I had, yeah. I had all of that it was still really a big struggle so I have so much compassion and that's the thing like no judgment of where people are what they do or how they respond because yeah you never know yeah no that's a really good point to make because I think on the surface some people might think they got it all together they, yeah. this, they make it look easy and you've gone through a lot and just acknowledging like your path has not always been smooth sailing as a mom, you know? Yeah, no. And I remember I, I there was a tapping experience. Uh, so this is when I was trying to conceive, um, going through the fertility stuff and I was doing the hypnosis and we, she introduced me to tapping. Oh. And there was one time where she's like projecting into the future. So when I have a 12 year old and I'm going to be like, man, why did I want to, you know, not, I, I can't remember exactly, but we laughed. Like she was making light of like, one day I will be a mom and I'm going to go through some struggles of it's like, this is really hard and frustrating. Uh, you know, like having a child who's pre like a tween or whatever it is. And it's true. Like, so it's just, it is a journey, you know, it is a journey. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes, you know, we just want to be a mom. Right. And that's a desire for sure. Um, and then just knowing that, that, that will carry over into other things too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I appreciate you just being so open and sharing vulnerably, mm -hmm. you know, you've gone through a lot and it's almost like that pain you've transformed that pain into this new purpose, this new work you're doing. And same kind of with me, you know, like how we mm -hmm. both, have, <laughs> we're, the more we share our journeys and we're helping others through some really difficult stuff. And yeah. Um, thank you. I'm so excited that we're connected in <laughs> different groups and yeah. support each other in our, in our personal pursuits. Yep. 
And how can people find you? <laughs> uh, both my websites are under construction, but maybe by the time people listen to this, Lynn Newman, L-O-I-N-N-E Newman uh, com or Gray, G-R-A-Y mothering.com. I'm going to have a podcast released in 2021 and so like you eventually a book and stuff, but yeah, I'm on Instagram and uh, or online. I'll, I'll tag your links here and yeah. Thank you, Lynn. This has been an awesome soul sister conversation. Yeah. Honored to have you. you. For anyone who's looking for personalized support on their fertility path, reach out to me at ivfmanifestingamiracle.com and here to support you on your mothering journey. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Lynn. Love ya. Bye. <laughs>